Praise the Lord, everyone. Today is April the 17th, 2022, Easter Day, the day that the Christians celebrate the real resurrection of Jesus Christ. Welcome to the morning tip off to the Mecca, Church of God of Christ, Power for Living Sunday School class. Your teacher for today is Ella Otis Bride Sr. Today's subject is cleaning the temple. Our Bible scripture. Is John chapter 2, verses 13 to 22. Our Bible truth, Jesus wants us to restore honor to the church as the sister plays our worship in the, the lives of God's people. Our memory verse as reads as, and said unto them that so does, take these days his, Make not my father's house a house of merchandise. That's coming from John chapter 2, verse 16. Our lesson aim is by the end of the lesson, we will describe how Jesus cleaned the temple, representing restoration in our lives, desire a fresh revelation of God in the church, and create a list of ways that we see God's power in our daily life. Lesson overview, lesson lead, life needs for today's lesson. To observe the church as God's separate place of worship. Bible learning, through Jesus' action, recognize how God requires us individually and collectively as the church to reveal his presence. Bible application to begin to understand through Jesus' actions of cleaning the temple, the restoring work of God, a thought to remember. Purity in our worship expression is still important. Let us, let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Father, for this opportunity that you have provided to us today, Father God, to come, Father God, and worship and praise you and remember Father God, that our Savior died on the cross, that we may be free from the sins of this world. Now, Father God, we ask that you bless each and every one that's in attendance, Father God, whether they are here in the building with us or on the social media platforms, Father God. Bless them, help them, and guide them, Father God. In Jesus' name we say, amen, amen, and amen.
Today's our lesson scripture will be coming from John chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. And it reads as follows. In verse 13, it says, And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, 14, and found in the temple those that sold ox and sheep and doves and the changes of money sitting. And when he had made a straw a small cart, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the ox and poured out the changes money and overthrew the table and said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And verse 17, and his disciples remember that it was written, the zeal of that house has eaten me up. 18, then also the Jews and said unto him, what sign should thou unto us, seeing that thou dost these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Verse 20, then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and will thou raise it up in three days? But he spoke of the temple of his body. And verse 22 in the last verse reads, When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remember that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scriptures and the word which Jesus had said. Now, let me, uh, before we get into the lesson here, let me uh, give a little background, okay? First of all, uh, Apostle John, he's the author of the Gospel of John. John wrote to prove that Jesus Christ is not a man, but is indeed uh, the eternal son of the living God. And all who believe in him will have everlasting life reigning with him forever and ever in his kingdom. In other words, Jesus is fully God and fully man. In addition, because Jesus offered the gift of eternal life to all who believe in him, he is also the light of the world. Amen. He is the word and the long-awaited Messiah. John not only revealed Jesus to us in both power and magnificence, he also showed us Jesus' power over everything created, as well as his love for all humanity. Let's look at the temple here. The temple is located in Jerusalem. The temple was a religious and political seat of Palestine on a hill overlooking the city. During their festivals, Jewish families from all over the world traveled there for the grand celebration. King Solomon had the first temple built at this same site almost a thousand years earlier. But his temple has been destroyed by the Babylon, who took many of the Jews into captivity. The temple was rebuilt in 515. The temple in Jerusalem was the center of Jerusalem's religious life. Although the faithful of Jesus' red time regarded the temple as a superior sacrifice place, it had also become controversial. By the time of Jesus, the temple had been led for seven generations by a standard family of priests who was regarded widely as corrupt. A custom has arised to use the outer court or the temple to sell animals for sacrifice. This was an obvious convention for people who travel great distance to worship there. Many people in Jerusalem perhaps approved of the practice, though some undoubtedly objected, especially in the corrupt temple leadership had a hand in the business. Likewise, it has become customary that only one kind of coin could be used to give offering to the temple. 
So many changes, money changes also did business in the temple courtyard. Often there is acceptable coins and they change for the for the unacceptable coins that are brought in by the worship with them. He said, while many was content with business as useless, other was uh, 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 Others were aces for refund. Those wanting to refund focus on God's ancient promise to King David that David's son will one day build a house for God and establish a new and nearly never ending rule. Some people had approved to be the fulfillment, proved to be otherwise. But for Israel faithful, is that the promised temple of fulfillment was yet to appear. They looked forward to, 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 to the time that God would send the one who would build the promised temple and assume the throne of Aaron lasting kingdom. Now, even John the Baptist, the forerunner of uh, Jesus, you know, he asked, was he the one? And uh, uh, at that time, Jesus, you know, he didn't give the right answer. He told it. Those little bits that John Baptist said said to go back and tell them what they had seen and what they have heard. Now let's get into the lesson here today. In verse 13, it reads, is that and the Jews passed over what was at hand. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, here the, the Passover. Okay, the Passover was a festival. Is instituted by God for Israel at the time of the Exodus in order to commemorate the night when Yahweh spared all the firstborn of Israel by striking the dead of all of those of the Egyptian firstborn. Now, this is this Passover is a time when thousands came from all over the world to participate in this celebration that God has done to save his people but deliver them from slavery, okay? Now, here at, uh, in Jerusalem, you know, as, as we had said, Jerusalem overlooked the city. You know, they sit on this hill, the people can look down and they can see the city, okay? It was a beautiful place, uh, Jerusalem, and the temple was a beautiful place. Now here in, uh, Verse 14, it states, and, G uh, and found in the temple of those that sold ox and sheep and dove and the changes of money sitting. He said, now, every time, every time Jesus came into Jerusalem, he had an uh, encounter with the uh, Jewish leaders, okay? And this was no different time here, no different. Okay, he still had a problem, okay? And at the end of the story, Jesus is killed because of those religious leaders in Jerusalem uh, during a Passover feast. Okay, today, this is near the beginning of John's gospel, set the stage for that coming uh, confrontation, okay? That's gonna come on later on, a couple years later, okay? Here in verse 14, is that in the outer courts of the temple, is the court of the Gentile. I said, this scene is familiar to the Jews of Jesus' day. The animals needed to sacrifice are on display for sale. So all of these sheep, goats, and doves, you know, they had them out there, parade them, where the people could come in and buy them. Okay, and I said, these animals needed for the sacrifice, okay, uh, because people was coming all over the world. And no, they couldn't break these animals with them. So they had animals there. And, uh, there. But the thing is, they had them inside the courtyard. Okay, and this courtyard was where the um, the individuals from the Gentile, the people like that, done the, the, was there to worship. Okay, and, 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 and they also exchanged unsuitable coins. Okay, because these people was from pagan communities. Okay, and they had the coins and the money from that community. And when they came to Jerusalem and to the temple, they couldn't use that that that, that money. And so these uh, chase 
uh, record was there. No, it was it, it was like a scam. You no, know? they were they was there to make money, but they were doing this inside of the temple. Okay, and as we get into uh, look here at uh, verse fourteen, you no, know, Jesus came to that and he saw them doing this. Here. He saw them uh, these these oxen and sheep and doves, so to be changed, and they did. Okay, and, and, and verse 15, and when he had made a, a scorn of small cord, he drove the ball out of the temple and the sheep. So not only did he drive out the inhibitions that were selling them, he drove out all the animals, he drove out all the sheep, he drove out the oxen. Okay, he poured out the, 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 out the changes money. You no, know, he turned over the table. Okay, okay. Uh, in, in this place, you know, Jesus got he got angry uh, at this expectation and reading this practice of those verses and money changes. You know, they they disrespect, disrespected the temple, okay, and all, all those workers that was in there, okay. See now you have to remember that people was coming all over the world, the Jews and the Gentiles was coming in to worship God and to praise his God because this was the place for for worship, okay? And this is why they came. And uh, here they are, some of these things, you know, these animals, trying to make some money. And, and let's look here at uh, the next two verses here, verses 15 through 17, okay? God house is a house of worship, okay? And in uh, 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 verse 16 here, it says, and said unto them that so does, take these things here, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. Okay? Uh, see, Jesus didn't, didn't just protest against them. Okay? He did something about it. Okay? And not like, like a lot of us at times, we see things that are going on wrong in church or in our families, in our home, nothing about it. Okay? Jesus did something about it. He ran them all out, okay, and uh, he cleaned up his house, his father's house, okay, okay. See, not only did he drive out those merchants, he did, he took care of all the elders too, okay. He took away all this distraction that was keeping these worshipers from worshiping the, the true God, okay. Now this individual was freely available to worship God wholeheartedly, okay which is why they was there, okay? And verse 16 and 17 here, uh, it says, and his disciples remember that it was written, the zeal of uh, that house that eaten me up, okay? Uh, here is, and uh, let, let me back up, back up a minute, okay? And, and, and verse 16 here. Let me, let, me, let me say something else here. Jesus' word was was uh, when he when he spoke about the uh, some of these doves and all. Okay, he wasn't just talking to 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 all. He was talking to all of them, not just to the individuals that, that uh, were selling the doves. Okay, he was okay. The animal sacrifice for those too poor. To afford a sheep. And that's what the doves were. And Jesus was thinking about those poor people. Okay. Okay. And so he was, he was dealing with them. He said, Look here. Okay. Uh, don't be sacrificing these, uh, these inside this temple here. Uh, these merchandise. Don't take all this stuff out. Okay. Let these poor people here worship God in peace. Okay. And then Jesus justified his. Uh, his command here with a state. The temple is understood to be the house of God. The sacrifice symbol of his presence among his people. This is affirmed that the temple belongs to God. But in doing so, Jesus made an unexpected claim and referred to God as my father. Okay. And, and when he when he did that, okay, it caused the Jewish leaders 
to just go, wow, okay, okay. Uh, the Jewish people see occasionally they refer to God as Father, but they did it so collectively, not in a vision. They, they said, our Father. But Jesus said, my Father, okay. And when Jesus referred to God as his Father, he implied that he had a relationship as God, okay. So a personal relationship, okay. And Jesus had the right to act boldly in the temple because he entered the temple as the son of God, to whom the temple belonged. With that authority, Jesus declared that God's house is not a place of merchandise. Okay, we must be concerned that we do not treat, uh, create unholiness in our proper worship area. Even more important, we should take care not to bring unholiness in the real temple of the Christian, our holy body. Okay. Uh, here in, in 17, uh, when the disciples saw how Jesus responded to such disrespect, they remember Psalms 69 9, the zeal of that house has eaten me up. Is that in other words, Jesus saw the wrong being done and would not stand for He, he let, it, we let it continue as the disciples recall the word, perhaps they see Jesus dedication to God's temple as big him to the temple like to describe the scripture of the and this Psalm 69, 9. Okay. Let's move on. Let's move on to verses uh, 18 to 22, where we'll be looking at Jesus. The meaning of the temple. 18. Is that then Jesus, the what sign shall it down into saying that that does these things? Okay, the Jewish leader did not approve and demanded to know what authority doing this. Who gave you the power? Who gave you a supernatural sign? God. Okay, now here is the Jesus answer is in the red. Okay, it's like a puzzle, or a riddle, okay? It appeared to present a challenge to the temple leaders that if you tear down this temple, then I would be a, that I am the one where uh, Jesus was saying that he was greater than Solomon. Okay, key. Um, so what, here in verse 20, you're going to see in verse 20, okay, that uh, then in verse 19, when he answered that, and he talked about he was going to destroy Jesus also has said unto them, destroy this temple and three days. This temple, they were thinking about it. But that's not what Jesus was talking about, and that he was going to raise the body, okay, and, and uh, three days. And, and, and verse 20 here is that then said to Jews, 46 up in three days? No, that's that what he told that, that new building. And now Jesus would say, tear it down and build another one. Okay, the religious 
leaders, they were thinking that Jesus was telling them that this earthly temple would be torn down here. Uh, Jesus was speaking of his body as a temple, as a temple of God. Okay. And when therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remember that he had said this unto them. And they believed the scriptures and the word which Jesus had said. Now, even Jesus' disciples did not understand this statement. Okay. Uh, and they remember, they remember this. After Jesus had risen from the dead, after Jesus had been crucified, okay? And, and, and as you remember in the story here, when Jesus was being crucified, was going into the court, Paul, Peter, no, denied him three times, okay? But then Jesus died on the cross, and they, and they, they just knew it, did. everything was over, okay? But you know, that was in the end. He rose in three days, just like he said. He rose again in three days. Okay. And when they buried, when they buried Jesus, okay, put him in, put him in uh, as a tomb, uh, it was a cave. Okay. The Jewish leaders, they remember what Jesus had said. And they didn't want the, the Jewish, they didn't want his disciples, his people. Okay, to go and get him out again to prove that he was right. Okay, so they asked the Roman leaders to put a put a big stone up on that grave, on that front of that cave. What it could be removed by normal means. Okay, and it did. It's all right. I was some guards there also, and they had guards there. Guard this this tomb. Okay, but you know what? Ain't nothing too different for our God. Okay, nothing can hold God back. Okay, God sent an angel to that and removed that rock. Okay, and then on three days, because the, the, they didn't have the time to actually prepare Jesus. Okay, so Mary and some of the women went down there early one Sunday morning to uh, prepare his body, put some perfume and stuff on his body, you know. And when they asked, they were going down, they was wondering. How are we gonna move this big old rock? Okay, and they got that the rock was gone. Okay, and our ancient told him, he said, "What are you looking for? He's alive. He is risen." Okay, and, and as Mary, so even though at that time Mary still didn't understand what was happening. Okay, so she was running around. As she saw this man, she thought it was a garden. And she asked him, what have you all done with my Savior? Okay. And, and then Jesus spoke to her. She called and said, hey, Mary. And she said, oh, my Lord. He said, Look at him. He said, don't, don't test me. He said, I haven't went to my father yet. Okay. He said, but this is what I want you to do. He said, I want you to go back there and tell Peter and the rest of the disciples to meet me in an upper room. And she ran back and she told him, okay? She told Peter him. Peter came down and had him and John. John was a young man. She, he had read Peter, okay? So he just stood there. Peter came around and he ran on in and looked, okay? And he saw that the tomb was empty, okay? And then he went back about six days later or so. Jesus they was in the upper room, just like Jesus had told him to go. And Jesus just walked in and disappeared. He didn't open the door, he just appeared in the midst of them. Okay. He said, Don't be afraid, it is I. Okay. So then everybody was there except old Thomas down the tower. He wasn't there. So he didn't get to set to see him. Thomas came in later on after Jesus had left. And the disciple told him, he said, hey, Jesus had risen. The master had risen. <laughs> Thomas said, oh, no, I don't believe you. He said, I'm not going to believe until I see him. He said, I'm going to stick my fingers in his hand. I'm going to stick my hand into his side. Then I believe. Okay. Because Jesus was crucified on the cross. They put sticks in his hand. They put sticks in his and his feet. And then they stabbed him in the side. He said, hey, I want to see this. 
and get them out of the league. About a week later, Jesus appeared again. And when he appeared again, the old Thomas was there. He said, Jesus, know what Thomas has said. He said, hey, Thomas. He said, here I am. Here I am. Put your fingers in my hand. Put your hand in my side. And you know what old Thomas said? He said, Lord, my God. Okay. He was a believer. And God told him, the Lord told him to look at him. He said, you all believe because you see me. He said, those are the bishops that believe who has not seen me, they are blessed. I'm here to tell you all today, I'm a blessed man because I believe. Is there anybody out there that believes? Okay. You, you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross was buried for all the sins? Okay. See, he was no sinner. He took upon all the sins. Okay. And when he was on that, when he was on that trial, he said, by God, by God. Okay. Now he wasn't pleading for himself. You see, it was the first time God had left him. Okay. God left him because of the of a sin. God hates sin. Okay. So this was the first time our God wasn't with our Lord. Okay. And he felt all alone. Just like we feel when Jesus died with us, you feel all alone. But you know what? Our Lord says that he never will for leave us, never will forsake us. Okay, that he always be with us. See, the problem is not that Jesus leaves us, it's that we leave him. Okay, but Jesus, he made a way for us. Because he said, all they here to do is confess your sin. Okay. Okay, and then he'll come back. See, we need to be faithful to it. We need to continue to believe it. Okay, it's not just this day, but it's each and every day. Okay, that we all need to believe in the Lord. Okay, and we need to worship him, we need to praise him. Okay, give him honor every day. Okay, see, the, the Jews they praised him as they came in a little bit earlier, riding on a donkey. Okay, they put all these bristles out there and uh, leaves and, uh, uh, out there in the street, put their coats down and came in. And here they did a few days later. That's what that wasn't even a few days later. Okay, just a few hours later. And they crucified. They said, Crucify, crucify. Okay, every time that we sin, we put a nail in his hand. We are saying crucify. Okay. Okay. We need to stop that. We need to stop putting your nails in his hand. Okay. We need to stop and and live for God wholeheartedly at all times. Okay. Bless his name. Okay. See, see when, when, when Jesus, before Jesus left and ascended back to heaven, he told his disciples. And when he talked to his disciples there, he was talking to us today because everyone who accepts Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior is the disciple of him. Okay. And he told him, he did. He said, I want you all to go out and I want you to spread the gospel. Okay. We called it uh, uh, the Great Commission. Okay. And, and this is what we need to do. Okay. Go out there and spread that gospel. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Tell people about it. Tell them that we have a Savior okay, who died for me, and he died for you, and you can be free. Okay. No, no. All right. Uh, let's, uh, let's go on here, because I got a question for you. And the question is, what did Jesus mean when he said, discard the temple, and in three days I will rise it up? I mean, somebody tell me now. What do you think? Okay. All right. All right. It's, yeah. Jesus was referring to his body and his own death, burial, and real resurrection. Okay. That's what he referred to in those three days. And you know what? He said it and it happened. Uh, are there any other questions concerning the day's lesson? All right, we can move right along. Okay. Uh, next Sunday is April the 24th. 
2022. And the subject of the lesson is going to be Woman of Samaria, coming from John chapter 4, verses 7 through 15, 23 to 26, and 18, 28 through 30. All right? That if, uh, if you have a question or you have a problem, you want to get a hold of us. Okay, you have a comment, a comment or anything. So you can get a hold of our uh, super Otis Bryant at Otis Bryant dot emoticoaching.com. That's O D I S E B R Y A N T at I M A N I C O G I C dot C O M. All right. You know, a lot of people want to be saved. And a lot of people, know, they hear the story of Jesus Christ and they want to be saved, but they just don't know how, okay? It is easy as ABC. Accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. B, believe that he died on the cross, was buried, and on the third day, God the Father physically raised him from the dead. And C, confess that you are a sinner and Jesus is Lord. He is the Christ and Savior who can forgive you of your sins. Amen. That's right. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for this opportunity that you have given us here today to come for your thoughts. Father God, we are praying that all local churches will be a place your spirit is pleased to dwell, to dwell in. I pray that every sanctuary is in a place of honor where your holiness is revealed. I pray to assemble myself daily and quickly repent of anything that does not please you because your son gave his life for me. I present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is by reason of service. Father God, we are asking that each and every one, Father God, that Father God would do this, Father God. For God will be a blessing to you each and every day, giving you glory, giving you honor, Father God. Father God, Father God, we are praying, Father God, that you hear the prayers of all the individuals, Father God, that's on the line. Uh, on Facebook, on YouTube, in this place here today, Father God, where I accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior and continue to praise him all the days of their life, Father God. In Jesus' name we say, amen and amen. Now, let me say something before we go. Because he has risen. He has risen. All right. And today at 3 p.m. Pacific time, the Southern School Department has put together a program, the Real Erection Story, that will be viewed on Facebook. Okay, you can look at it at Tiffany's Greenwood, uh, Otis Bryan Senior, Facebook, and YouTube, ITT YouTube. God bless you all. Now, there's a praise in the temple. It's service time.